I recently bought a bunch of these EcoSmart 60 watts equivalent of uh, LED bulbs. And uh, they are of the G16.5 style with an Edison 12 or E12 type of base. So basically the base is roughly 12 millimeters in diameter. Now this is actually quite an achievement in my opinion given the relative small size and high power dissipation of this light bulb. In fact, while most of the lights in my house have been replaced with the LED bulbs over the years, I hadn't replaced the lights in my upstairs bathroom until quite recently. And the reason is that the light bulbs used in my upstairs bathrooms are of this kind of uh, bulbs. And the fixture has a very tight dimensional tolerance. So basically pretty much the only uh, light bulbs that I could fit in is this kind of uh, G16.5 light bulbs. And uh, LED lights of this wattage and the size just weren't around until quite recently. In fact, if you take a look at the LED light bulb here, this is just a little bit of uh, taller, uh, I mean, dimensional-wise, longer than the original G16.5 light bulb. But uh, um, even with a tight, tight tolerance, this light bulb fits perfectly. So I'm quite happy with that. Now, before I open it up, should we give this light bulb a test? Um, I think we should, and I also wanted to take a look at the uh, power factor of this light. Now, unfortunately, I don't have a spare socket available, so we'll have to just power uh, this uh, light via some uh, soldered on wires. Now, of course, that's not the safest way to do so, but uh, I will be careful. Now you can see that we just soldered the two wires onto this light bulb so it can get us started and uh, we will uh, measure the power consumption and the power factor. Now to make it a little bit safer, I did plug in this WhatsApp uh, power meter into an isolated and fused outlet so that uh, uh, just in case we touch a light wire, we don't uh, shock ourselves. But anyway, so... Let's uh, plug it in and see how bright this light is. Of course, that uh, the camera right now is set to automatic uh, compensation, so it will be a little bit harder to tell. But I can tell you that if you look at this, it's actually very, very bright. And uh, so in order not to blind you, let me uh, actually unplug this and move it out of the way and plug it back in so we can read the meter here. So let's plug it back in. And as we can see that uh, it is drawing about, uh, let's see here, it's drawing about 6.3-6.4 uh, watts and it's rising. And uh, so the nominal power of this uh, uh, light bulb is rated at uh, 7 watts. So as we can see when we stabilized, uh, we're just under 7 watts. So that's perfectly uh, good. So now let's take a look at uh, the power factor here. And the power factor we're reading about uh, 0 0.75, 0 0.76, which is actually surprisingly good for light bulbs of this kind. Uh, I can tell that it probably has sort of some kind of uh, power factor correction built in, otherwise it would be even lower. So that is something that we will take a look after we open up the light bulb. And I just uh, open it up, and you know what, I like the construction a lot, because you can just open it up with a single screwdriver and without destroying anything, because the whole thing is clipped in place. So we have this spacer ring here, and this goes down like this, and you can rotate it so that it uh, stays in. On top of which, we have a diffuser, and this is right on top of the, the uh, LEDs. So gives out a, a more uniform light. And then we have this uh, plastic cover, which just snaps right on. So this construction is quite neat. Now, um, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm going to power it down using a, a DC power supply to just uh, measure the, uh, uh, the readings of this LED, so to figure out what uh, configuration these seven LEDs are in. Um, but in general, these kind of uh, lights uh, probably they're all in series. So let's just uh, take a look at that. And for that, I'm going to 
have this meter here and uh, I'm going to um, keep my leads in place so this is going to be a little delicate because what I'm going to do is I'm going to using the other hand to turn on the, uh, the light gradually so it will be really bright so you might not be able to see but uh, right now it's a full brightness and we're just under uh, 50 volts okay so let's turn it off And uh, this Dimble LED uh, is slightly different than the other ones uh, I did a teardown before. If you recall that the Cree one I did, um, or the Philips one, I forgot which one, we have one single LED in there, so when the voltage starts dropping, uh, that little LED actually turns on, the other LED remains off. Now this one is different because all the seven LEDs are on and off um, at the same time, so let me try it again. I'm going to give it a little bit of voltage and it will see that when it lights up. And so when I turn it back down, um, all the lights, all the LEDs are uniformly lit. And uh, so they're basically in sync. So anyway, so now let's uh, open it further up and uh, take a look at the circuit board inside. Speaking of which, this video is sponsored by JLC PCB, where you can have your PCBs professionally made. JLC PCB offers hobbyists and professionals very affordable PCB manufacturing services. For instance, you can get 10 pieces of a dual layer PCBs made with a dimension up to 10 cm by 10 cm each for just $2 plus shipping. And you can also order a standard 28 cm by 38 cm laser cut stainless steel stencil for your design for just an additional $9. JLC PCB can manufacture PCBs up to six layers at a very competitive price. So why not give them a try for your next electronics project? And we can see we have two screws here. So hopefully after we remove the two screws, we will be able to see the uh, circuit board inside. Uh, but sometimes it could be uh, glued on. We don't know, but um, Looks like though uh, we do have this uh, a heat sink area, so we won't be able to see the uh, actual circuit board before we further remove this uh, heat sink. And I think for that we have to uh, remove it destructively by cutting this open. Give me a moment, I'll be right back. So I finally managed to take out the circuit board. Unfortunately, in doing so, I had to cut the integrated aluminum sink uh, open and retrieve the board. Now, as I mentioned earlier, that uh, the general design of this light bulb, you can actually open up the top portion without destroying anything. So particularly if, say, uh, one of the LEDs fail, I suppose you could, instead of tossing the whole light bulb out, you could uh, just replace uh, the individual LED on the chip. Or you could uh, just uh, get a uh, replacement LED board. Now, of course, given how cheap these light bulbs are, I suppose nobody would uh, go uh, do that nowadays. So anyway, so here we have, well, as we can see that uh, um, the input from the mains, which is uh, these two leads, coming with this, uh, through this fusible resistor, and uh, then we go through a bridge rectifier uh, after which we have this uh, filter capacitor here and uh, notice that this is a very small filter capacitor and uh, typically this is associated with uh, a better power factor. But when, when your input capacitor is uh, relatively large what happens is uh, through each charge and discharge cycle you are only going to be charging a little bit of that towards uh, the peak of the uh, input waveform. That's called what causes the uh, poor power factor. Uh, but anyway, so what I'm interested in is this particular chip in here. And uh, I can see that, let's uh, zoom it in a little bit more so you can hopefully see uh, the marking. So the chip here is an AL1696-30A. So and here I just print out the uh, datasheet of that AL1696 uh, driver chip. 
And the first line you can see here, it is touted for its high power factor. So let's take a look at uh, the block diagram of this chip. And uh, as we can see on this page, basically we have uh, the final stage is the MOSFET drivers, and we have a VCC power management and a zero crossing detection circuitry, and uh, some fault uh, measurement circuit. Uh, sorry, fault management circuitry. So the charging and discharging cycle is controlled by this uh, T on max, and uh, if you read the uh, operation principle, you will see that uh, uh, the T on max is uh, correlated to the power factor power factor of this circuit, which I will not uh, bore you by reading the, uh, the, the this uh, document, and you can take a look if you are interested. But I did make a slight mistake, is that uh, earlier I mentioned this one might have a, a power uh, correction, power factor correction circuitry, and they actually, in fact, it does not. So basically, by reducing the size of that uh, uh, input uh, filter cap, and uh, by cleverly switching the, uh, the components, we can uh, maximize the uh, power factor. But uh, this one does not have any active power factor correction circuitry. So anyway, I hope you enjoy the video and uh, learn something new. If you enjoy the video, please give it a big thumbs up. And I will catch up the next time.